of the Almighty were worshiping here, those who are in the Memorial Garden, and all those who are watching with us this morning, welcome again to our service. Let us begin now with our liturgy, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have, have done and by what we have left undone. We have, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for us and for his sake he forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Let us rejoice in God's forgiveness. Let us rejoice in God's grace. Let us rejoice in God's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share this peace with one another. If you're here, please share the peace of the Lord, keeping social distancing with the international symbol of peace. Peace. If you're watching at home, please share the peace of the Lord with those who are watching with you here in the chat and with those who you have at home. And if you're watching later by yourself, look at a window, go outside like we are today and say, the peace of the Lord be with you. Because from right here, from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Glen Rock, New Jersey, I'm saying back to you and also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Do we have a liturgical assistant this morning? I am. <laughs> Let us continue with the liturgy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For this holy house and to all who offer here their worship and pray, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Sing now a hymn of praise. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Ready for worship? Yes. Are you in the spirit? Yes. yes. Good, because it's part of July, Sunday morning. We gotta do it. You at home the same. Get up, sing these hymns, because God is here. God is in our midst, and we're giving worship and praise to God. So let us pray. And for the prayer of the day, I would like to share a prayer from Washington. George Washington, of course. <laughs> 
Almighty God, we make our earnest prayer to Thy will keep the United States in Thy holy protection, that Thou will incline the hearts of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordination and obedience to government and entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and their fellow citizens of the United States at large. And finally, that thou will most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, and to deem ourselves with the charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion, without a humble imitation of those example in these things, we can never hope to be a happy nation. Grant our supplication, we beseech thee, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Do we have a lecture? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. First reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me even considering the exceptional character of re revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to you, O Lord our God, until you show us your mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy for we have had more than enough of contempt, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel comes from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. <coughs> Glory and this is the good news for us this morning. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that he been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, 
the son of Mary and brother of James and jo Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could not do deeds of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whatever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace your church to all of you and this beautiful 4th of July Sunday. Just need a little more beer there. Today's gospel about Jesus sending the disciples two by two with no bag, with nothing to care for themselves other than to proclaim the good news, in some denominations may be understood as a call for the pastors or the priests. For them to go but we are Lutherans and as a Lutheran we believe in the priesthood of all believers in that we understand this gospel to be a word for all of us we all sin we are all children of God we are all being saved by the Lord and we all been sent to share the good news that's what we call the priesthood of all believers in the Lutheran Church and I think it's very fitting for today 4th of July because the Christian testimony in America was not top down, it was not sent by the authorities of the church. It was shared person to person, neighbor to neighbor, pilgrim to pilgrim. Immigrants who head west, pushing the boundary of the nation. The Methodist Church at that time, early in the history of the United States, was building churches at every day's journey going west. So in that spirit, I would like to share the good news to us with a sermon about prayer. I shared earlier today the prayer of George Washington. And I share it with you not only because it's the 4th of July, but because among our many traditions to celebrate the 4th and our freedoms, often we forget to pray and to remember that prayer is part of our celebration of our independence. So how can we start talking about prayer in a Lutheran church on a Sunday morning in the midst of the congregation gathering? Well, I would like to start with a small catechism. Remember this? And this is the fancy edition. We used to do this one for the Confirmation 2.0 class, coming back in September, by the way. Reserve your seat. Confirmation 2.0, small catechism. Luther teaches prayers in the morning or in the evening a lot of us learn how to pray when we are little as children and depending on your tradition they tell you to pray at night before going to bed or in the morning luther has both morning and evening so you're good i'm going to share with you the morning one and what i like about this is that it comes with some pro tips listen martin luther morning prayer in the morning when you get up Make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Pro tip. Then, kneeling or standing, repeat the creed and the Lord's Prayer. If you choose, you may also say this little prayer. And now comes the prayer. I thank you 
my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Last pro tip from Martin Luther. Then, go joyfully to your work, singing a hymn, like that of the Ten Commandments, or whatever your devotion might suggest. The end. I love that pro tip of Martin Luther and the idea of going to work, singing a hymn. I love that. In my case, it's got to be a short hymn because I live right next to the church. <laughs> but you guys can sing a, a longer hymn. And I was wondering, what hymn will you choose to go to work in the morning? As you get up in the morning, say your little prayer, your devotional, and then off you go. Get in the car or walk, whatever you do. What hymn will be the best hymn for a Monday morning to go to work? Think about it. If you're watching at home, put it in the chat. What's your hymn for the morning to leave the house with? So prayer, Martin Luther, morning prayer, hymns. Here at church, we have a prayer group that meets on Wednesdays. We used to meet in Richwood, as you guys may remember, at a coffee shop. Now, since COVID, we are meeting on uh, phone call. Um, uh, no, it's not a it's a conference call. Thank you. The heat is a. Uh, I'm struggling here. It's a conference call, and in that conference call, we pray for each other. We pray for you. We pray for those who are in the prayers of the church. And one of the people in that group, uh, Ann Spell, he's not a member of our church, but he watches. So Ann, if you're watching, I have the book you gave me. She gave me this book. She was on vacation and saw this book. I pray for every need, and he thought. I'm going to get this stuff with Pastor Jay for our prayer group. And here I have it. From this book, I would like to share two prayers with you. One is a very famous prayer that you may know, but you don't know who wrote it. The author of the prayer is Reinhold Niebuhr. And the prayer goes like, goes like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. As I said to you before, when we talk about prayer, when we talk about worship, when we talk about being a Christian, we're not talking about me as the pastor of the church. We're talking about all of us. We're all believers. We're all Christians. We're all members of the church. We are all sent out into the world. Who do you know who needs to hear this prayer today? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. In your life, who needs to hear this today? Who needs to hear from you and say, listen, I'm thinking about you, and I'm praying for you. I would like to share this prayer with you. That's a prayer for, from Reinhold Niebuhr. Another prayer in this book that I like, it's from Spurgeon, a famous British pastor. I thought it would be appropriate to have a British pastor in today's sermon, 4th of July. Um, so let me get the page straight, 105, 105. And Spurgeon has an amazing story. You may remember how he became a believer and then a pastor, famous preacher in the Baptist Church in England. This is his prayer. When you have no helpers, have you been there? When you have no helpers, when you have no helpers, see all your helpers in God. Now, when you have many helpers, when you have many helpers, see God in all your helpers. When you have nothing, when you have nothing but God, see all in God. And when you have everything, everything, when you have everything, see God in everything. Under all conditions, 
stay thy heart only on the Lord. Charles Spurgeon. A beautiful prayer to remind ourselves today that if you're spending the 4th of July alone, you are with God. And if you're spending the 4th of July with your family and friends, you are with God as well. Let us rejoice and support each other as we pray for each other and care for each other. So today is a sermon about prayer. A prayer for you, for me, for us, for the country, and for the world. Last year, 2020 was a very hard year with COVID-19 and the pandemic. And right before the pandemic hit, Carol Voss gave me this little book of prayer. Carol, if you're watching, thank you for this book. I use it often. And this book was given to Carol by the Lutheran Church woman of the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. I will not tell you the year, but I have it. In this book, or from this book, I share with you last year in 2022, a prayer in the time of pandemic that I, I found in this book. So imagine 2020, April 2020, hardship, the news, difficult times, people dying. And this prayer was shared from Good Shepherd a time at the time of an epidemic. Heavenly Father, I beseech thee to turn from me and from my fellow men the destruction and terror of this epidemic. I pray thee, stay the hand of the angel of death as he proceeds from dwelling to dwelling. I ask thee, above all, to draw me closer to thee as a chastening rod afflicts us, grief-stricken and fearful, let me not despair of thy mercies. Grant me the grace in humble repentance and sincere faith to look to thee, who turnest all things to the good of them that love thee. Grant the necessary wisdom and success to those who strive to stem the tide of affliction and quicken our hearts to bear the burdens of once another's grief and need. Lord, in thy mercy, save us. A powerful prayer shared in the midst of our COVID-19 pandemic that still has us today at the edge, not only of protocols and safety measures, but also of grief and mourning. Just last weekend, I was at a funeral of someone who passed away last year, but the family wasn't able to have the funeral until last week. And as children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren were sharing all their memories with their loved one, they could help but broke into tears. And one of the grandchildren, a young man in his mid-twenties, tearfully said, you will think I will be in better shape after a whole year. But the pain, the grief, it's still there. And the prayer and the faith holds it still today. So we pray, so we are sent, you are sent, I am sent. We're going into the world with prayers, with faith, with hope. The pandemic not only hit us in this life, or with our health, but also with work. And a lot of us struggle during this time, losing our jobs, not being able to work fully. In this book, there's also a prayer for unemployment. It's titled, In Days of Personal Unemployment. Do you know someone who's struggling with work right now? Do you know someone who needs to hear a prayer in this time of looking for work? If you do, listen up. O oh God, thou hast been my help in the days which lie in the past. Turn not from me in the present hour as I walk the streets discouraged and disheartened, seeking work. 
Surely thou dost care for me. Guide me with thine eye. Lead and direct me to find suitable employment. Take all resentment, bitterness, and rebellion out of my heart. Make me hopeful, cheerful, courageous, patient, and confident. Thou hast promised to be with me in the day of trouble. Open thy hands and satisfy my needs. Teach me to face the day confident of thy goodness. O Lord, let me now doubt thy promises. Hear the cry of my distressed heart and disturbed mind. Have mercy upon me, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Powerful prayers. Prayers of hope, prayers of support, prayers that carry us on. Not only in the bad times, but in the good times. Not only on Sunday morning, but on Monday morning. Not only when we have abundance, but also when we have scarcity. Prayers that are with us all the time. We all go through different things. And we all have different struggles. But we pray for each other. We are sent to care for each other. Is anyone sick among us? Is anyone sick at home? Do you know someone who is sick? Maybe you know someone who is beginning an extended course of treatment. Maybe you know someone who is battling an affliction. If you do, maybe a prayer from this book will come handy. This is the Pastoral Care Red Book in the Lutheran Church. And I use it uh, for many things. And one of the things here are specific prayers for specific things. So one of those prayers is the prayer for an extended course of treatment. And it goes like this. And how often the answer is, there's no magic pill. There's no magic shot. It's going to be a long journey. How many times we heard it's going to get worse before it gets better? And we're stuck in the moment. Not alone, but with God. And the way we like to say it, our Good Shepherd, God is with us all the time. All the time. God is with us. That's right. From this book. Are you guys tired? How are we doing with time? We got a lot of time. No? Okay. Can no I have well, a lot of time? Okay, I take this testimony. A lot of time. From this book, too. You can have a prayer for addictions. And my heart always goes to those who struggle with addictions, or those who are working with their addictions. Because that's a long journey. That's a long journey that doesn't have an easy fix. And a lot of things in the church about addictions is that addiction is covered with shame. So we are hesitant to share a church that we are struggling with addictions or that a loved one is struggling with addictions. And the problem with that is that we end up suffering alone, carrying the burden alone, when we are not alone. We are with God and we are with each other. So if you have someone you love who is battling addiction, if you at home watching are struggling with addiction right now, this prayer is for you. Oh, blessed Jesus, you minister to all who came to you. Look with compassion upon all who through addiction have lost their health and freedom. Restore them to the assurance of your unfailing mercy. Remove the fears that attack them. Strengthen those who are engaged in the work of recovery. And to those who care for them, give honesty, understanding, and persevering love for your mercy's sake. Amen. You can text that to someone right now. You can take a picture from this page and send it to someone you know right now. So that person knows that he or she is not alone.
so that person knows that he or she is a child of God. So that person knows that Jesus from the cross is leading the way. So we like to say God is with us all the time. But is God with us all the time everywhere? How about if I move to Pennsylvania? Is God with me? Bless you. Yes. God is with me in Pennsylvania. Ohio, I don't know, but Pennsylvania for sure. But sometimes we go to different places, foreign lands, away. Away from church, away from our pastors, away from those who believe, away from our church. How can we ground ourselves when we are away in an unfamiliar environment? And today, 4th of July, I'm especially thinking about those men and women serving our military forces who are away on a ship, on a foreign land. I just had the great honor and privilege to be on the phone with Pastor Rachel Sarnke. Remember her? Our last intern. She's in Germany, captain of the army, chaplain. And we talk and pray and catch up together on the phone. If you're in the military forces and the armed forces, the Lutheran Church of this book is called Prayer Book for the Armed Services. And it's a beautiful book. Some leaders in the Lutheran Church nationwide, they call this the best secret, the best kept secret in the Lutheran Church, this little book. It has beautiful prayers. And from this book, and especially thinking about our men and women in service, I would like to share two. Two prayers that are not unique to those who serve, impacts us all, but are particularly powerful when you find them in this book. The first prayer is a prayer after the death by suicide. Death by suicide has to be one of the most painful deaths because of your family, your friends, those who love you are really heartbroken. In the military, of course, they struggle with this, but also nationwide. You may know that there's 132 suicides on average a day. Let that number sink in a little bit. One, three, two, 132 suicides in the nation a day. The most vulnerable people are middle-aged white males. Do you know a middle-aged white male? If you do, you may think about this prayer. It goes like this. Out of the depth we cry to you, merciful God. Out of the depth we cry to you, merciful God for your child who just committed suicide. Meet our confusion with your peace, our anger with your mercy, our sorrow with your consolation. Help us be still and know that you are God and that nothing in life or death will separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Nothing, nothing can separate us from your love. In life or in death, nothing can separate us from your love. Or like we like to say, God is with us. All the time. Don't fall asleep, I'm just warming up here. I have more. Another prayer that I think is so poignant in this book is a prayer for a lost limb. Not only because of the situation, of course, that you imagine in the military, you may lose a leg, an arm, maybe both, but also the sense of grief. If you're in a car accident here, if you don't serve in the military, you can connect to this. Maybe you know someone. The prayer goes like this. Lord Christ, you came into the world as one of us and suffer as we do. As I go through the trials of life, 
especially the loss of this limb or sight or both help me to realize that you are with me all the time in all things and that your loving grace enfolds me for eternity in the security of your embrace I pray Amen I love that last line in the security of your embrace I pray can you imagine to pray in the security of God's embrace at the prayer group a few weeks back we were reading the book of Psalms and the book of Psalms for that day had this image about being cuddled in God's arms can you imagine being cuddled by God and in that warm embrace pray to your God prayers of faith prayers of hope prayers not just for me but for you for us and for the world this little book you can see it's been well used this is the old special occasions book and I've done a bunch of stuff with this book and have beautiful prayers one prayer that I say often is a prayer that is in the funeral service and I say that often that I know it by heart in a, in a funeral service this prayer is said help us help us to believe in the midst of things we cannot understand help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe are you there are you struggling with your faith are you confused are you tired you don't get it you go to church and it doesn't do anything for you do you remember years past that you felt so connected to God and now you're not there anymore? You don't know why? Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand. To be with God, the creator of heaven and earth, throughout all our lives, into death, into life eternal. And with that, another prayer from this book that is close to my heart, and I've said it a couple of times, is when you have to disconnect a loved one in the hospital when a loved one is in the hospital connected to a machine to keep him or her alive the doctor says there's nothing else we can do so you need to disconnect the person sometimes they call the pastor sometimes they call me I go with my little book hold the people in prayer and in faith and I say these words God of compassion and love. I do like this song. <laughs> Please say a prayer of thanksgiving for green lights. <laughs> as I said before in a hospital environment when you're about to disconnect a loved one holy, holding each other in faith I say these words God of compassion and love you have breathed into us the breath of life and have given us the exercise of our minds and wills in our frailty we surrender all life to you what a beautiful line. In our frailty, we surrender all life to you, from whom it came, trusting in your gracious promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We surrender all life to you. We surrender our life to you. We surrender our struggle to you. We surrender our addiction to you. We surrender our pain to you. We surrender our anger to you. We surrender our lives to you, the author of all life. Are you praying nowadays? How's your life of prayer nowadays? Are you praying for yourself, for your family? Are you praying for others? Are you praying for your fellow church people? 
Are you praying for each other? As you know, one of the things that I do is that I write a prayer note to all of you every year. Every year I send all of you a prayer note with a Bible verse so you know that I am praying for you. This year, I'm writing notes to you with a Bible verse from the prophet Isaiah. It might sound familiar. It says, But for those who wait for the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But those who wait for the Lord. Do you have to be the pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church to write a prayer note to a fellow member? Do you have to be the pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church to send a text message to someone in the congregation? Do you have to be the pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church to pick up the phone and call someone and say, Hi, it's me from church. Just wanted to say hello. Just wanted to check in and see how you're feeling. Jesus sent the disciples two and two to all these villages to proclaim the kingdom. Jesus is sending you today to send, to be sent into the world with prayers, with hope, with faith. This is the gospel. This is the good news that you and I, although broken, although inadequate, although imperfect, you and I are sent with prayers, with hope, with faith to the neighbor, to the fellow church member, to our family, to our friends. We hold each other in prayer. And who God has better than us, who are right here, right now, ready to go. I share with you that I'm sending you notes using the prophet Isaiah. Do you remember the story when the prophet Isaiah was called into ministry? That's in the book of Isaiah, Chapter 6, little Bible parenthesis, book of Isaiah, Old Testament or New Testament? Old Testament, good. Chapter 6, at the beginning of the book, you remember the story. Isaiah sees the image of God in his throne with angels and cherubims and archangels. And Isaiah says, oh my God, I'm going to die because I'm a sinful man and I'm in the presence of God. And an angel comes with a charcoal and purifies his lips with a charcoal, or a hot charcoal. And then Isaiah, in this vision of the glory of God in the throne, he overhears God talking. And God says, chapter 6, Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. I started this sermon asking you, what song will you like to sing in the morning before you go to work? What song will be appropriate in the morning after you get up, have your breakfast, say your prayers, and hit the road? I don't know what's your favorite. This is mine. Please sing it now with me. Yeah. 